Miro has become one of our favorite digital whiteboarding tools to collaborate with others, as it allows multiple participants to create notes and designs, move things around, vote and communicate just like you would in person. We find it so impactful for hosting online workshops or just brainstorming with remote team members. Today, I'm going to be reviewing a few feature highlights for new Miro users. To start, when you log into Miro, you'll see that you have your team areas on this left-hand board where you can even add new ones. And then you'll notice this projects area down here. We recommend using projects as it allows you to easily organize your boards into categories as well as simply share with a group because everyone has access to all the boards in a project. For example, if you needed a, if you wanted the marketing department to have their own project area to brainstorming on upcoming initiatives, everyone in the marketing department would have access to all the boards, not just boards that they have worked on. So if they need to be pulled in, they can see everything. As always, we recommend starting from templates. So when you add a new board, Make sure to give your board a name. So we'll do test and share. And then you'll see you have the ability to search through all of these different templates to find what you're looking for. You'll have to adjust it to meet the needs of your team, but it gives you something to work from and can even give you ideas of different brainstorming activities that you might not be aware of. Let's go back to a board that I've already created. I'm going to review some navigation tips and tricks for you as some new users can find navigation to be bulky. The idea of Miro is that you can have multiple different areas on a large never ending board. So it can be hard to find what you're looking for. <clears throat> To navigate, just right click and hold to navigate around the board if you're in one area, and that works great. But as you can see, when you're trying to navigate around all the different areas of your board, it can be hard to see what you're doing just by navigating around one area. To, so to zoom out, we're gonna zoom in just to make this work, just hit Alt-1 and zoom out and you're gonna see everything in your board. And say I wanna go to this area up here, then I'll just hit Alt-2 and it'll bring me right to that area. This is great when you're hosting online workshops as to not filter around the board um, if you don't use bookmarks within the board or links. Another helpful tip for navigation is Control F will bring up a find bar that will allow you to search for what you're looking for. So if you're looking for a particular activity or topic, you can put that in the search and it'll show you where it's at in the board and it'll give you multiple different options as well if you have similar um, topics to choose from. Sticky notes are obviously the heart and soul of any Miro board. It's where all the great ideas get put down. Um, but it, So it's good to know how to add sticky notes um, in a quick manner. Um, you can just go here and add a sticky note and kind of choose, but that we can find kind of time consuming, although they do have a bulk mode option. A quick way to add sticky notes is decide where you want them. Say I want a group over here for people to brainstorm with. Just select here and hit N. And then I want my sticky note to be blue. And then if I want multiples of that sticky note, I can change different objects on the sticky note, um, including the shape, font, everything like that. And then once I have it the way that I want, just hit um, tab to continue to create sticky notes. And I'll just add them in a row. <clears throat> this I find to be a really quick way to add sticky notes to a group. Um, just really efficiently. Um, you can add, say that I had sent out a form to have people do brainstorming in advance. I can add them from an Excel sheet as well, just by copying and pasting. So say this is the response from um, a brainstorming form that I had sent out or survey, just copy and then go back and paste that in. And I can choose to either paste as a table or paste as sticky notes. So I'm going to choose to paste as sticky notes. 
and then those are all over here. And while they're all grouped together, I might want to make them that blue and have font instead of auto. I want them all to be the same font size because I find that's easiest for people to read. And then just group them with the others. You'll notice that the sticky notes aren't aligned very well. They're not very pretty to look at. So we're just going to select them all and then go to these four dots right here. And then drag them into formation. We can play with the formation size to get it the way that we want it um, and drag it around to get to the area that we need it to as well. This smart align with the four dots right here works not only for sticky notes, but any type of widget like frames or anything like that as well. Frames are a great way to organize the content on your board if you have multiple different areas, especially if you're going to be presenting um, or sharing the information with an audience. It also gives you the ability to export the information on your board into PDFs easier to break down the content. To get to your frames, just select right here. You'll see they have the ability to add all different sizes frames or just do custom depending upon your presentation. If you are if you know you're gonna be presenting, then always do 16 by nine because then it'll show up really nicely on the presentation. After you create some frames, if you open your sidebar, you'll see that you have your frames there. So I already have brainstorm and then customer problem solution brainstorm um, in here. Let's go down and um, create a frame together. So if you already have the information on your board in the area, then just go back to your board and select the area that you want to be made into a frame and just hit create frame. <clears throat> you then can go back to your sidebar and rename it. Um, so we're going to name it like prioritization. I normally name it the same as the title that I give in the frame. And I try to have a title on each frame um, just for easy navigation. And it looks better when you export it to PDFs. So then say you want to export everything to a PDF and say export this board. Save as PDF. Best quality. Then when we open the downloaded PDF, you'll see that each of my frame areas are on their own PDF. So if you're sharing in an email with a group, say after a workshop, everyone can kind of see the different areas and it's more of an organized way of sharing the information after the fact as that's what you really want to do is collect the information, but then make an impact with it and be able to share it. You can also link to a frame if you're hosting a workshop and want to have like a menu with different areas to keep everyone organized. So if there's multiple different groupings, they know where to go and they can just click on the link and it'll take them to that frame within the board. Other ways to kind of export your data out of these boards is by exporting it as an image, or you can export it as a CSV, which will um, take the data from each sticky note and put it back into an Excel sheet, just like we almost copied and pasted, it's the opposite. Another helpful tip when working with a group within Miro is by utilizing the timer. Say you want to do a brainstorming activity and want everyone to put down a bunch of post-it note ideas, um, and then you'll come back as a group and organize them together. Being able to set a timer really will keep you um, on track to say you all have five minutes. People can kind of see the progress of their five minutes and when their time is up to, again, bring the group back together. It's really helpful when for when hosting large workshops to make sure that the that the agenda stays on track and you don't go over in time in any area, which then would leave you lacking in another area. Mira has some great collaboration features within uh, the board itself. 
one I really like using is the comment feature. So say I have a question about a um, sticky note that someone else put down. I can just click on the sticky note. I can add that person and then um, write the comment. So I'm the only one in this board, so it's not going to show up with people, but I would want to make sure to tag the person and then ask the question that I have or even um, ask for clarity if I'm unsure what they meant, that type of thing. And I can do that all within the board. There's also a really great um, chat feature as well up in the apps where you can kind of create a chat with people in the board. Miro has so many different capabilities and functions, including um, voting and estimation, um, as well as all of these additional tools down here uh, for you to explore and play. These are just some of the features that I found really useful when learning Miro to navigate easier and to get started for new users.